The Scott Spark is the most successful cross-country bike of all time, but it's always had one eye on the fun side of things. You only have to watch Nino Schurter styling it up when he's miles ahead of the competition to see that. For riders who want to take that fun even further, the Spark 900 series features a boost in fork travel and burlier components to give it a solid extra dose of downcountryness. But with range-topping Sparks now touching close to £15,000, can the cheapest carbon frame version, this Spark 940, live up to its tempting £4,299 price tag? The first thing that stands out with any of the latest Spark models is the incredibly neat Hidden Shock frame design. It's the first Scott bike to use this design, though it has been rolled out to the longer travel genius as well. This hides the shock inside the front triangle, and there's no denying that it gives the bike an incredibly clean look. It definitely turned plenty of heads out on the trail. Bikes in the Spark 900 series, like the 940, get longer travel 130mm forks and dropper posts on all models, compared to the 120mm forks on the Racier RC versions. They also use Scott's twin lock remote system to control the suspension settings on the fly, but more on that later. Regardless of the model, you'll get in the same proven pedigree that's taken Nino to glory on many occasions. But while the frame shows its quality, the rest of the spec does leave it feeling a little undergunned where it should excel. The 940 model sits in the middle of the range and features Scott's HMF carbon front triangle paired with an alloy rear triangle. This does save cost but adds a little extra weight compared to the full carbon frames used higher up in the range. The rear triangle uses flex built into the seat stays rather than a heavier, more maintenance intensive pivot. It's an approach we're seeing on a lot of other shorter travel bikes like the Spark and its rivals. The seat stays push on a rocker linkage that's partially visible on the outside but connects internally to the top of the shock. Hidden away inside the frame, the shock is isolated from trail debris and water rather than being out in the open and subject to abuse from the elements. In order to access the shock for adjustments, a tool-free, quick-release door, which doubles as the downtube protector, is located at the base of the downtube. I can hear the comments screaming already, and yes, the gear and dropper post cables, as well as the rear brake hose, run through the headset. Any headset routing is as bad as it sounds, but as we'll find out later, on the Spark, unfortunately, it's even worse. Sharing a frame with the Race Focus Spark RC, the 940's geometry is modern without being overly radical. This is definitely not a short travel shred sled. The reach on the size large is a fairly average 470mm and the head angle sits at 65.8 degrees. The headset does allow you to steepen the head angle by 0.6 of a degree by turning it through 180 degrees. In turn, this allows you to steepen the steering feel if you want the geometry to more closely mirror that of the Spark RC. Wanting to see how hard I could push the bike, I left it mostly in the slacker setting for testing. The chainstays are a moderate 437.5mm in length, while the bottom bracket sits a hefty 43.5mm below the axles in a bid to boost cornering stability. At 76.4 degrees, the seat tube is reasonably steep but the tube itself is actually longer than I'd like. My large test bike has a 490mm seat tube, limiting the ability to run a dropper post much longer than the standard fit 150mm Syncross Duncan. When it comes to the specification, the main point of difference between the Spark and its rivals is Scott's twin lock system. This uses a remote lever on the handlebar to control the three compression settings, lockout, trail and descend, on the custom built fork and shock. In the lockout setting, the fork and shock have the compression circuits closed off, giving a much firmer and more efficient pedalling feel for smoother climbs. Switch to the trail setting and the shock's air spring is constricted, limiting suspension travel and keeping the bike riding higher in its travel, as well as increasing compression damping to give a firmer ride. Finally, in descend, both fork and shock are left fully open, with maximum air volume too for the most grip, travel and comfort out on the trail. The handlebar remote has two levers to control these settings with a single click in either direction to toggle through the modes, or a full sweep to go from descent to lockout or vice versa in one movement. The third lever that sits under this is to control the dropper post. 
The shock and fork on the 940 comprise a RockShox Deluxe Select RL3 shock and a Pike RL3 fork to deliver 120 and 130 millimeters of travel respectively. Driving you forward is a mixed drivetrain from SRAM, comprising parts from their SX, NX and non-series X1 stables, while Shimano provide the two-piston MT501 brakes with 180mm resin pad only rotors. Scott's house brand Synchros provides the bulk of the finishing kit, including the rims and dropper post. Schwalbe's Wicked Wheel tyres in the middleweight super ground casing and speed grip compound provide the grip. Let's move on to the all-important ride impressions. I tested the Spark 940 around the trail centres and natural terrain of North Wales and the Midlands, giving the bike plenty of rocks, rolls, berms, hard pack and good old-fashioned UK winter mud to sink its tyres into. Setting up the bike was straightforward, with it being simple to get the suspension dialed in despite the shock being hidden inside the frame. The removable down tube door makes accessing the shock for air and rebound adjustments easy, while the integrated side dial on the linkage and frame actually makes it easier to set up than a lot of its rivals that lack this feature. A small removable rubber cover also makes it relatively simple to check if you're using full travel or access the upper shock mount bolt. What's less simple is the cable management thanks to the headset cable routing. Not only that, but the proprietary stem spacers also make bar height adjustment, shall we say, a touch awkward, as you'll need to cut the steerer tube down if you want to lower the bars any further. Once you do, of course, there's no going back to make them higher again. Measure twice, cut once, and pray to the heavens you don't want to go back to the standard height. The SRAM drivetrain is also a little disappointing given the price of the bike. I'd at least expect to see SRAM's GX feature, so the SX NX mix feels a little stingy. I'd much rather see a cheaper crankset than the X1 fitted if it meant a better quality shifter could be specified in its place. Given the Spark 940 can trace its origins to the world of cross country racing, it's no wonder it's an effective climber. It does take some work to unlock its full potential though. Or should I say, lock its full potential. On smoother climbs, the RockShox Deluxe does bob a fair amount, even with a fairly conservative 25% sag, and the bike relies on the middle trail setting of the twin lock system to feel as efficient as I would expect from a bike like this. It certainly doesn't invite hard, out of the saddle efforts as much as I'd like, and I felt I was forced into a more rearward position when seated. The flip side to this is that the bike has excellent traction on looser climbs, with the rear wheel really digging in and extracting maximum grip from the lightly treaded Wicked Wheel tyre. Given the wet and often muddy conditions on the trail, it impressed me with just how many technical climbs I was able to clean with minimal fuss or tyre slip. The tyres also roll well on harder surfaces, so you can make quick progress once up to speed. When the trail setting of the shock was engaged, the bike felt much livelier, with only a slight loss of that tractor-esque tenacity on looser surfaces. It was very proficient on rolling traverses, when you want some suppleness in the suspension to maintain comfort and traction, but still need a solid dose of ruthless efficiency. In fact, trail mode was so effective that I rarely felt the need to use the full lockout setting, despite having easy access to it from the twin lock remote. All is not so rosy with Twinlock on the way back down though. Though the suspension levers are a breeze to use, I found the dropper post lever anything but easy, with a stiff actuation and awkward location that was a real hindrance when I wanted to drop the saddle in a hurry. The situation was only made worse when the suspension was in the trail setting, as both levers are in very close proximity to each other and I was left fumbling around trying to feel which lever I was pushing. It's not all that intuitive and definitely something that could be improved upon. Outside of that though, the Spark is a very fun and capable descender that is held back by a couple of spec choices. The frame's geometry is very well balanced with the 470mm reach, mid-length chainstays and slack head angle giving the bike plenty of stability while retaining a good dose of agility. 
it feels great once airborne too, giving me the confidence to send some bigger jumps and drops than my admittedly limited skill set would normally allow. The RockShox Pike Fork gives the front end of the bike a muscular feel and offers excellent traction on rough terrain, while the rear suspension feels well balanced with the fork, despite having 10mm less travel. While the alloy rear triangle doesn't feel quite as stiff as the carbon front end, the spark holds the line very well until the Schwalbe Wicked Wheel front tyre breaks traction, which it did rather quickly. The minimal tread with small side knobs and hard speed grip compound really robbed the bike of front end grip, and it felt like a constant fight to keep it from washing out. Another spec choice that undermines confidence and control is the two piston Shimano MT501 brakes and their resin pad only rotors. These seriously lacked power, and combined with the tyre's lack of bite, meant steeper trails had to be entered with a large degree of caution. A grippier front tyre, like Schwalbe's Nobby Nick, or maybe even the Magic Mary, along with more powerful four piston brakes and better rotors, would be a much better fit, given how capable the rest of the bike feels on the descents. A bike I'm very familiar with is the Transition Spur. On paper, the bikes are very similar, with angles and measurements that are within a degree and a few millimetres of each other, and they even share the same basic linkage actuated single pivot suspension design. On the trail though, they feel very different. The spur has a more planted feel and feels more forgiving, with a lovely damped feel to the frame. The Spark is not a harsh bike by any means, but back to back, I could certainly feel that the Spark was a little edgier and gave a touch more feedback through my hands and feet. The spur also feels more efficient when left open and is far less reliant on the shock's compression lever on climbs, while giving away little in the traction states. The spark feels poppier though, and more a home on jump filled trails. The spur feels like it wants to squash any jumps or drops, and the spark just goaded me to send it as far as my skills allowed. The base level Dior build of the spur may be a few hundred pounds more expensive, but the better specification and user-friendly features like threaded bottom bracket and less finicky cable routing make it a very tempting proposition. While certain aspects of the spec and performance of the Spark held it back, it is still a thoroughly enjoyable bike to ride, and on the ride trail is an absolute hoot. With a grippier front tyre and better brakes, you could really unlock its descending potential. Given I rarely felt the need for the lockout setting of that Shock 2, a two position grip shift style remote for the suspension along the lines of RockShox's twist lock would be a great fit and would make using the dropper remote easier to boot. Overall, if you want a fun loving bike with a very good frame and don't mind swapping a few components out, then the Scott Spark 940 could be right up your street. But what are your thoughts on the Spark? Are you a fan of short travel bikes? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you want to see another short travel ripper, check out this video.